Roughly 10 years after the SARS epidemic, a novel respiratory virus was isolated in Saudi Arabia. This new pathogen, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome-related coronavirus, MERS, killed about 600 people. Both SARS and MERS are caused by viruses in the coronavirus family. Other, less known coronaviruses also infect humans, and human coronaviruses have repeatedly emerged during the past 1,000 years. The six human coronaviruses belong to different lineages and are closely related to animal viruses. In fact, most of them originated in bats and were transmitted to humans either directly or indirectly. This implies that coronaviruses have an alarming propensity for host jumps. Coronavirus genomes are unusually long and complex. They encode a fixed number of proteins that are necessary for the basic viral functions as well as a variety of so-called accessory proteins. Several studies have shown that during their evolution, coronavirus genomes have lost and acquired genes. For instance, early in the human epidemic, SARS coronavirus acquired a signature deletion which split ORF8 into two functional ORFs. We analyzed ORF8 in human, civet, and bat viruses that carry an intact gene, and we showed that relaxation of natural selection in ORF8 occurred during the shift from bats to civets in humans. These results suggest that our fate is necessary for infection in bots, but dispensable in the human and civet host. Recent studies showed that some accessory proteins were stolen from a mammalian host to serve the virus purposes. This is the case of phosphodiesterases, enzymes that some viruses use to block the host immune response. Mouse hepatitis virus, human coronavirus OC43, and MERS coronavirus encode related phosphodiesterases. A protein with structure and sequence homology to these enzymes is also encoded by group A rotavirus, an R-related virus. These viral enzymes share very little sequence similarity but high structural homology to the phosphodiesterase domain of a cellular protein, a KP7. These observations suggest that coronaviruses and rotaviruses have independently acquired phosphodiesterase activities and that a KP7 served as the source gene in both viral genera. Clearly, coronavirus genomes do not only evolve by gene gains and losses, but also via subtle changes that modify protein sequences. The spike proteins exposed on the viral surface have attracted great interest, as they most likely represent the major determinants of host tropism. Spike proteins have adapted to use diverse cellular receptors, and there is no congruence in the phylogeny of coronaviruses and their receptor usage. SARS coronavirus and human coronavirus NX63 use ACE2 as a receptor. However, the receptor binding domains show no sequence or structural similarity. NX63 contacts ACE2 with three discontinuous beta loops, whereas SARS coronavirus binds the receptor through a continuous subdomain. Strikingly, TGF, which is phylogenetically related to NL63, uses two regions corresponding to the NL63 beta loops to bind a distinct cellular receptor, aminopeptidase N. And finally, human coronavirus 229E binds aminopeptidase N but engages a distinct receptor region. Overall, these data highlight the extraordinary plasticity of coronavirus receptor binding domains and their complex evolutionary dynamics, whereby divergent evolution can be followed by convergent adaptation to the same receptor. In conclusion, coronavirus genomes display high plasticity in terms of gene content. Moreover, the long coronavirus genome expands the sequence space available for adaptive mutation, and the spike protein can adapt to exploit different cellular receptors. Efforts to identify the viral genetic determinants that favor interspecies transmission should be regarded as an effective strategy to prepare for the future emergence of human coronaviruses.